covering South Florida. Local 10 News starts now. The sudden death of Glee star Corey Monteith shocked and saddened so many Glee fans. And again, it has brought to the light the issue of drug addiction. Many times, it is the support of families that can provide people with the extra push they need to make it through so many difficult times. Joining me today is John and Amarin Giordano. They went through a similar struggle. Now they dedicate their lives to helping others. John, what do you think of when you see this? It, it's so sad. I deal with this on a daily basis. and. You know, and, and parents, they, they mean well, but they enable their, their children because they're afraid they're going to die. And it's just, it's just heartbreaking to see. And, you know, my son almost died from this. And I watched him lay in a bed, and they're putting charcoal down his throat. And, and, and you know, I always wanted a son. And, and all of a sudden, I see him slipping through my fingers, and it, it was horrifying. Yeah. Amron, what was the breaking point for you? And what do you see in the people that you help that makes them realize this has to stop? I'm, I'm, I'm on a road that's going to kill me. It's just sad. You know, uh, so many kids. You know, I'm 31. I happen to be 31. And, you know, we talk. I got in touch close to us, you know, um, being that Corey was 31 and I'm 31. And, um, you know, life's tough, but there's another way, you know? I used to think there was only one way, but my life has continually gotten better over the years through recovery, and uh, my father's been such a, a big influence on me. You yeah. Know? Nationwide, people rave about your method of recovery. You use specific methods to help people overcome the challenges of addiction, because some people just go in and out of rehab. Right, because we're 60 years behind the times. We're not looking at people medically. We're only looking at them psychologically, which is unfortunate. And what we're finding out that people have heavy metal toxicity, they have thyroid problems, they have uh, closed head injuries. There's so much stuff that we're not looking at that could be co-contributing to this illness. And it is an illness, genetics. So it's, it's sad to watch all this stuff. And, and treatment takes a long time to catch up to what reality really is. Tell me about your treatment facility and the kind of work that you do. Well, what we do is we have uh, the geneticist who found the addiction gene, works for us. He's our chief science officer at G&G Holistic Addiction Treatment Program. Uh, I have a blog for everybody to look at for all the latest science, all the videos on all the different um, uh, drugs that people do and all the different television shows that we talk about all this stuff. We use hyperbaric medicine to help with the brain. So there's uh, not just a one size fits all no, approach? No, no. It's an individual. People are individuals. We have to stop treating people as they're just one shoe fits everyone. It doesn't work that way. Everybody comes from different ethnic backgrounds. Everybody has different ailments that are inside of them. We need to look at people as a whole human being, not just as a psychological or a head walking around. So why don't we just send the head to treatment and leave the body home? Have prescription drugs changed the game as drug into drug treatment? Oh yeah, big time. What's happening is, is that people that are housewives now, you got police officers, you got firemen, you got newscasters. What happens is they get injured and then they get on these oxycodone or oxycontin. Their brain changes because that's what these drugs do. And now they're addicted. Yeah. And now their whole life changes. We're going to have to have you back again because we can talk about this from a very serious subject facing society. Again, we see another young life lost to addiction. John and Emmer, thank you so much for taking thank time you. to share your story and come in. Thank Sasha? You.